going on guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. So I brought back this underused team just to get one more use out of these bad boys. And yeah, so this is against Frankie from Twitter. And looking at the team preview, this man's got some pretty big threats. Um, I am worried about the Superior. That thing can be annoying if I end up losing my Registeel. Um, some other things would be the Porygon 2. I honestly just don't deal with that all that well. And then he's got some stuff like the Mega Altaria along with the uh, Tornadus. So let's go ahead and just hop right into the battle here. Alright, so as per usual, I'm going to start off with Beedrill and your mom. I, I kind of just end up leading off with Beedrill most of the time just to get a nice hard-hitting U-turn. So I send out Fork, ready to fork some bitches up, as he ends up going into the Infernape. And as I'm looking at this thing, either it's going to be a lead Infernape with Stealth Rock, or it's going to be Choice Scarf and just destroy me. So, um, I decided to switch out here immediately because I don't really want to risk that thing being Scarf. Uh, as he actually ends up showing me, he is going to be Stealth Rock, and I, I kind of just expected that he was going to predict my lead and try to just get a nice little early KO on my Beedrill. And I don't know, Fork was just looking super useful for this matchup. So um, now I'm going to bring in my Don Fan as he's going to hit me with a nice little overheat. That is going to do a solid chunk of damage, but it allows me to fire off an Earthquake in return, which is going to knock this thing down to its Focus Sash, which is really nice. So um, I'm thinking that he's going to expect me to go for the Ice Shard, so um, I'm actually just going to end up going for the Rapid Spin here, expecting a Switch. But he is actually just going to end up staying in and go for the overheat. I guess he realizes that um, I can potentially set up Stealth Rock. But he actually misses the overheat, um, which is really unfortunate for him. I think he was in range to actually knock me out. So uh, luckily for myself, I'm able to get a nice little rapid spin. And that's going to get rid of those Stealth Rocks, which is super nice because now he doesn't really have any way of setting those back up. So that is perfect. And I think that's actually like the first time this generation I've been able to knock anything out with Rapid Spin, so that's kind of funny. But uh, now he brings in the Tentacruel, Don Fan doesn't really want anything to do with that, so I decided to switch into my Snorlax, who is pretty much free to set up against this Tentacruel. So he goes for the Scald, luckily he doesn't get the burn, and it's not going to do very much damage at all. And I was kind of expecting him to want to switch out here, but he decides to go for the Toxic Spikes, which I kind of thought was interesting because I do have a Beedrill on my team, but then again, it's kind of difficult to bring Beedrill in a lot of the time on attacks. So it's not all that easy for me to soak up those uh, Toxic Spikes, as I'm now going to set up a curse, just kind of yelling to profanities at this thing, just, you know, cursing up a storm. But to my surprise, this thing actually ends up to be a Haze Tentacruel, which I haven't seen in about 22 Fortnites, so that's, you know, that's kind of cool. Um, so it's going to get rid of my stat changes. Unfortunately, uh, without the attack boost, Earthquake is not able to take this thing out in one hit, but it is going to knock it down to red. And, you know, I'm, in, I'm still in a pretty decent spot here because uh, this thing cannot take another attack and he can't really hurt me. So, Tubby's just over here eating some leftovers, just doing what he does best, you know, just cursing and eating leftovers. So, I'm just going to go right for a body slam, trying to get some pair hacks on whatever he decides to bring in. Um, he's going to go into the old rubber ducky who is going to download and get the uh, physical attack raise, which is nice. As uh, I'm gonna turn this thing into a nice little, nice little pancake, but that's not gonna do a whole lot of damage. And the fact that he brought this thing in against Snorlax pretty much shows me that he is gonna be physically defensive. So that is pretty good to know. As at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and switch into my doorknob, expecting him to go for the toxic, as he does. So that is perfect. And now I'm working with a free turn to be able to set up my Stealth Rock, which is really gonna help me out in the long run. So. Um, he's actually just going to switch right into the Tentacruel, maybe expecting a, a Toxic as well, but he can also actually Rapid Spin those away. So a, a pretty decent switch there as my only attacking move is actually Iron Head, so I don't have a whole lot to do to this thing. So I'm actually just going to switch right out here into my Snorlax yet again, who is going to get that regular poison, but I figured it's actually not the end of the world because considering he only had one layer of the Toxic Spikes, uh, getting a regular poison is actually kind of good because that means I can't get Toxic later and stuff. So. Uh, that's nice, as he does get the Rapid Spin, gonna get right rid of those Stealth Rock, which is like, I worked so hard to put those up there. You, uh, you're really just you're crushing my dreams there, Tentacruel. So, I'm over here getting hurt by a little bit of poison, not too worried about it though, as I expect him to probably want to switch right back into that Porygon 2 like he did last time, but I don't want to make any risky double switches here, so I'm just gonna go right for another Body Slam, try to get as much damage as possible, maybe a Para, as he does end up bringing right back in Mr. Dr. Seizure. And uh, it's not even going to knock this thing down to half. So, honestly, Porygon 2 is just so damn bulky. And it has always just been really annoying to play against, at least for uh, my type of playstyle. So, um, now I'm just going to actually switch right into Fork here. I can soak up that Toxic Spikes. And then uh, I was actually expecting him to maybe just go for another Toxic. So, that would have been nice. But he ends up just going for the Thunderbolt. So, this is actually one of those situations where a regular Beedrill can come in on an attack, surprisingly. So, I take that really nicely. And this allows me to get a Mega Evolution off, bring out the Big Needle. And I'm ready to pretty much just go for a U-turn, kind of expecting him to maybe switch, but then I realize that this thing's physically defensive as shit, and U-turn really just honestly does nothing against it. So, 
Um, this allows me to now switch into whatever I want. I decided to go into Chandelure, kind of one of my more hard-hitting special attackers. I didn't want to bring in Primarina in case he went for the Thunderbolt again, but he's just going to go for a Recover there, which is annoying, and now he's back to pretty much full. So, I am actually a Choice Scarf Chandelure, so I'm just going to go right for a Fire Blast here, as he's going to bring in the Floating Q-Tip, which is Altaria. So, the Fire Blast is not going to do too much, but at least I land it, so, you know, that, that's nice. Actually, does a sizable chunk. And uh, now I really don't want this thing to start setting up Dragon Dances after it Mega Evolves, so I'm just going to go right into Doorknob, and I know that he's going to need a, a good couple of uh, Dragon Dances to be able to um, really do too much to me with Earthquake, and I should be able to get some solid damage with Iron Head. If not, I can just get a nice little Toxic off. And uh, yeah, so now he turns into a way bigger cloud. He ends up just going for the Roost there, kind of just playing it safe. So that's actually nice. Uh, seeing him not go for the Dragon Dance is perfect. So um, I actually just decided to go for a Toxic here as he's going to switch right back into freaking Squidward. And uh, I'm really having some trouble with this thing as the Toxic's obviously not going to affect it. And my only attacking move is going to be uh, freaking Iron Head. So I, I really can't hurt this thing. So I do want to switch out here. Registeel is still looking useful though as I'm just going to switch into my Mega Beedrill. Expecting maybe another Toxic Spikes, but he ends up just going for the Scald here. Um, so it luckily doesn't get the Scald burn. That would have actually been really bad had he got the burn there. So I was kind of, that was really a risky play bringing in Beedrill there, but uh, I actually switched Beedrill into two different attacks. How, how amazing is that? Um, but now he's going to go right into Dr. Caesar yet again. He keeps getting the attack raise, so that's just pretty unlucky. Um, I am able to get a nice little U-turn off, and it's actually going to get a critical hit that time, which brings it below half. And this is a good time to note that that early play where he missed the overheat, which allowed me to rapid spin his stealth rock away, was uh, pretty damn important because that means that I'm able to keep on bringing Beedrill in. So uh, it's, it's really nice. But um, now I'm able to bring in Primarina on the U-turn there against the Porygon. I'm able to hit him with a nice little Specs Moonblast, which is going to take that thing out. And he really just did not have anything that wanted to switch into that. So... Sugar Mama did her job as now on the free switch he decides to go into the superior. I have a perfectly good full health Registeel though, so I'm just going to bring this thing in on a Leaf Storm. Um, it's really not going to scratch me like at all, but he is going to get that contrary boost. So he gets the plus two in special attack, and uh, he is actually just going to end up staying in here and firing off some more. Um, I am actually max special defense and HP, so I know that I can take a whole bunch of those even if he's at like plus six. I should still be able to um, eat it up pretty nicely. So he goes for another one, which does do, you know, a little bit more damage, but I'm still looking pretty healthy here. And I decide to go for a Stealth Rock, actually expecting him to want to switch out. But apparently the storm is not stopping anytime soon, as this thing's just going to stay in here and pretty much just uh, continue to leave Storm. So I'm eating some leftovers, looking pretty damn nice, and honestly using Registeel and Underused has turned out to be way more useful than I expected. This is kind of an interesting set. It's pretty much just Stealth Rock, Iron Head, Toxic, and Protect. But I go for an Iron Head here just to kind of scout out how much damage it's going to do. And also, I didn't really see what item this thing had. It turns out to actually be Leftovers, which is interesting because you don't really see... Uh, you usually generally see Life Orb because I was kind of expecting this thing maybe to be Specs or something. But um, I'm just going to go for a Protect here maybe to stall out another turn of Leftovers. Hopefully, I can live um, another leaf, leaf Storm there. So I get some more. We're both over here just eating some apples, you know, just having, a, you know, as, as usual, a freaking picnic on the motherfucking battlefield. So I'm at about half, and I'm feeling pretty confident that I can take another one. As he goes for the Leaf Storm, he ends up actually getting a critical hit, which I think mattered. But uh, either way, that's going to take care of Doorknob. Not too big of a deal because I do still have Mega. Mega Beedrill, who is faster than Superior. So I'm still in a pretty good spot here, as uh, Poison Jab actually should be able to take this thing out. So I bring back in Beedrill, who is able to come in freely without the Stealth Rock damage. Like I said, that Overheat miss earlier really is kind of taking a toll. So uh, the Poison Jab is going to take care of the freaking Grass Snake, and that is awesome because snakes are, you know, fuck snakes. They're, they're scary. So uh, now he brings in Squidward. I'm guessing he just goes for that, hoping that I don't end up being a Beedrill that has Drill Run. But I hate to rain on his parade because I do have Drill Run. And that is going to take care of the Tentacruel, which is nice because that thing has been just pretty damn annoying the entirety of this match. So uh, it's looking like Beedrill is able to have a nice little late game sweep here as his last Pokemon is going to be this Tornadus. And he is about to get a Tornadus. As uh, I'm just going to go for a Poison Jab here. He is Prankster, so he's able to get the Bulk Up which is going to boost his defense one stage, and it's going to make it so he is able to um, at least take one of these. So the Poison Jab is going to come in, not able to take it out, but it lives it with red HP. And now he's just going to go for a rest. He turns out to be Resto Chesto, 
which is actually these things are pretty fun to use and not to use the uh, the prankster actually makes these things super viable but uh, so he gets himself back to full HP then he pops that berry wakes himself up and then he realizes there's really not much he can do as poison jab is just doing way too much damage and he's not gonna be fast enough to hit me with an attack so he's gonna decide to run there but that is gonna be the end of the match guys thank you for watching go ahead and hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed and as always please subscribe for some more Wi-Fi battles it's uh, it is greatly appreciated peace out